This is Travis Lemoyne with Siler Geodrones, and in today's video we're going to talk about the Siler Geophoto beta software that we've recently released. So this software is to solve a couple of issues. Um, we'll talk about this first. So when you're working with a drone like the Phantom 4 RTK or the Matrice 210 RTK version 2, uh, you run into a couple problems because the uh, basically the Z information is saved as an ellipsoidal height and not actually a uh, an elevation. So you'll see, um, let me show you this example here, we've got some data in PIX4D and this is essentially without any, uh, any kind of correction at all. Oh, let me show you the bad one first. So here's the data. We see we've got some points here that are over that's over top of the data that was processed with some images and if we bring in the cameras we can see oh the that the the, uh, the cameras are kind of lined up with they're actually a little bit below where the ground control points are so this data was taken in uh, just south of milwaukee wisconsin so we have a geoid offset from the ellipsoid of about 100 feet here so it does vary from place to place across the country um, here's a, a map from the ngs that shows us uh, what that offset is so wisconsin tends to be uh, some of the 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 larger offset within the continental United States here um, and it's not very dynamic in other words it doesn't change a whole lot across the site uh, if you're in different parts of the country for sure you can have more issues as you see these uh, um, these contour lines come together um, those are places where software like geophoto is going to be more useful rather than maybe just applying a, a you know static difference uh, across all your photos so to show you here um, the results that are obtained with this, here's a, another project, well, same project I should say, but we've actually applied the, the geophoto adjusted points here. Um, and we can see without any kind of, uh, without using any kind of a ground control point, let me just show you here. I do have a checkpoint in here. I've not actually applied anything. Um, where we've got some pretty good values uh, and this is based on a completely uncontrolled site um, so no no modifications have been done we use the 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 drone itself which was connected to the the Wiscores correction network and ended up with some pretty good results here's uh, some unobserved oops, here's an unobserved control point let me click on that and we just see where the photos fall um, with the estimated positions for control it looks pretty good. So in order to make this work, basically we've got our, our app Geophoto, which you'll, in order to get a license for, so we're not charging anything for the beta now, and then the basic version will will continue to be free. Uh, for for our customers, we'll, we'll provide at no cost a, a more advanced version as we develop it that'll maybe be a little bit more efficient in how it do, goes through the process, or it'll be a little bit uh, faster and offer some different results. So in order to get a license, basically you hop on over to our website and go to uh, geophoto-beta. Um, and give us your name, your email address, agree to our, our policy here, our license agreement, that'll get changed in a bit. Um, uh, click the little I'm not a robot thing to avoid spam, and then you'll get an auto response with a, a license and download location. So, um, you know, the, the, the email you'll get will have a, a link that can be downloaded and installed really as many times uh, as you'd want to. However, the license really only covers the person that fills it out. Or not really. It, it, that's the, the situation. So if you've got another person in your organization that you want to send it on to or, you know, a friend or someone that you, you're recommending it to, um, send them the link for this. And the reason we say that is uh, it's going to help us know what sort of resources to allocate. So if we don't have a whole lot of interest in it, uh, developmental wither, and uh, if, if we do see a lot of interest in it, you know, it'll persist. So it's important that, um, you know, you just don't forward that on. Uh, the license doesn't grant you that ability and we really need it for, for tracking purposes. Um, so let me show you how the app works. It's pretty basic. Uh, you'll see in the directory here, 
basically you get a um, an executable file, a copy of the end user license agreement, and then the uh, a logo. So all three of these files have to be in that folder for it to work. Um, so you double click on the GeoPhoto Beta uh, executable, and the way we license this is uh, essentially every year um, we're going to come out with a new version or a new license to it. So after um, 2019 goes, then we'll have a new license. In fact, I, I estimate probably midway through the month we'll have the 2020 licensing on the, the software. It's a, a pretty basic time check that just ensures that uh, if you change your clock or something like that on your computer, that's not going to trick it. It's going out to the web to a, a server to find out that information. Um, so once you uh, once you have started the executable, uh, basically you click the choose image directory, um, and then you're going to navigate to where you have your your files. We'll bring that up, and in this case, I have a folder called EXIF adjusted. So it's going to act on every uh, every every image file within that uh, directory. So we're going to say select folder, and then it's going to go ahead and start the process. So depending on some computers, it won't actually continue to show. So there you'll see it just did it to me. It says not responding. It's still working in the background. If I open up that directory, um, what we'll see here, and let me just uh, view this in a different manner to make it a little more apparent. Um, we'll watch the details. So it's still working. Basically what it does is after it updates the location, it's going to add a, an NAVD88 underscore in front of the, the file name. So that's how you know it was actually applied. So it's running through it. You can actually see the, the GeoDrones application has actually says it's not responding and it's it looks like it's locked up, but it is actually working on it. That is a change we're hoping to make in the next version of the software. So there we go, we're getting to the end, and once it's done doing that, then okay, we're at 100% complete. So we'll see a couple things here. Um, basically those files are renamed, and now we have an output.csv file. We'll hop into there, and uh, let's take a look and see what that uh, photo shows, or th what this shows us here. Um, so basically it's a common delimited file. We've got our new file name, We've got our latitude, our longitude, our old, um, yes, this is, uh, I'm sorry, our new elevation, or I'm sorry, our old elevation and our ellipsoidal height. I've got that backwards. The um, And then the geoid that was uh, used there to, to do the calculation. So I think as things change, we'll update that to use the geoid 18 model. Uh, as of right now, we're just using Geoid 12B, um, and it does this in kind of a brute force method where it's asking for every every change. So um, in this case, in this particular site, all the photos are actually have the same um, uh, ellipsoidal uh, difference from the geoid. Geoid undulation is static, so there's no change between um, what, what it applies to one photo and what it applies to the next. But uh, if we then hop back out, let me show you the actual details of the photo. So in this case, um, let's see. First photo, we'll see what we've got here for our position. There it is. Altitude, or in this case, mean sea level elevation is gonna be 284.21, it's meters. If I hop into the original folder, where I've got these sitting, uh, which I always do recommend that you run this on a backup copy of the folder or of the files. Um, there we go. Into details. And we'll see here it's 249. So our, um, close that and compare them side by side. So that's the only change that was made. Uh, of course, the latitude longitude stays the same. It's just a difference in the altitude listed there. Um, and uh, the other good
good thing about this is it doesn't it just is only changing that exif information there in the altitude it's not actually making any change to the size so now when you take those photos bring them right into pix 4 d um, you'll get the uh, the good situation I was talking about earlier where your uh, point cloud is going to fall right into those um, ground control points so if you're using ground control this the only benefit to this this utility is that it uh, makes observing your ground control points a little bit quicker because they should pretty much fall on top of the the ground control um, it's a, a very helpful utility if you're trying to you know get away from a ground control uh, ground controlled site um, and you want your your uh, elevations to be accurate with respect to the geoids so um, that's the the primary benefit so if you've got any questions please uh, send us an email at emerging tech at silar com or leave some comments here in the uh, uh, comment feature of YouTube and uh, be glad to get you more information thanks much